Shag pile carpets, blow up furniture. What do you remember most about the past five decades of design? Well, tonight we're here to talk about the past 50 years of design in five themes with BDP and USM. I think the most important thing of the past 50 years in design um, has been the public becoming design savvy. So the public becoming really interested in the issue, what it means, the mode of making, um, the stories behind it, who designs the things that they use. I think probably the most important thing is the democratisation of design. The fact that it started off as an elite concept and now we all know what it is and we all have it in our lives. So that's got to be the best thing ever. I think the best thing to happen into design is the multi-generational uh, workforce uh, where you can feed off each other. We've got four generations in the workplace at least and I, I'm learning a lot from my young colleagues and hopefully they're learning a bit from me uh, and I, I think that's really exciting and one of the best things that's, that's happened. Plus we all like each other's music which is great. The, the, having just walked over from the studio now the bit that resonates with me is this mix of digital and analog and it feels like it's kind of like a prop or something like that but actually on me I've got the Apple Eye pen and then a classic kind of black ring pencil as well and it's that power of bringing both those things together so it's being able to communicate things in a very kind of simple way and then a very complex way as well so that's that's a bit that that, that duality is what I feel now is the most kind of powerful output of the last 50 years in in the design world. Why is actually having different perspectives uh, in terms of sexes important in terms of how spaces are conceived and realised? So I think that there's a sort of hidden history of women in interior design that we perhaps should revive. Hidden because we don't, they haven't been given the recognition perhaps? I think that and also I'm afraid it is this, this word interior decoration or two words that, you know, cushions. <laughs> People don't like them. But I think we have to recognise that that's, it started in the domestic and grew from the domestic out. And that, you know, that needs acknowledging. Yeah. I'm, I've been thinking about this. I look back to the 80s and there were, there were very few women in leadership roles, actually. And there was a lot, lot, but there were some amazing women, I remember, as I was coming into the, into the business in design and very powerful people that had a big impact on, my, on me in my early career. What do we think about the role that countercultures play in shaping mainstream? Um, well, they, I mean, they tend to feed design, don't they? Because they sort of, um, they start off on the radical fringe and they, they kind of bring up new perspectives that I think are impossible to come up with in an office where you're, you know, serving the status quo and clients who want things on a particular time, particular budget. Um, and they come up with, you know, completely radical new takes on ways of living and aesthetics, ways to use materials. Um, and that always ends up being absorbed. Uh, into the mainstream and either by people in sort of larger offices absorbing those aesthetics or by those people growing up and setting up companies and uh, becoming national icons like Vivian Westwood and Ron Arad, I don't know, from the from the kind of punk period. Um, so I think it's a kind of perpetual return that happens every generation, um, which I think is very natural, very healthy um, and always exciting. I, when, when I was researching, I thought I was sort of looking at um, Action Office which was from the 70s, and Robert Probst with Herman Miller saying, design always challenges change. And I think that aspect of, of it was, um, was really interesting. And Herman Miller asked Robert Probst to, to sort of research and looking at ideas and concepts, and he looked at from agriculture to medicine. You know, so stretching out and actually looking at design and not being in this little pocket that we seem to get ourselves into and stretching further than there. Is the rise of fast design a positive or a negative? I, I, I think that, um, I, I mean, there's good, good things about IKEA. I mean, it, it has popularised and made it more accessible and that's great and that's a good thing. And, but the problem is, of course, with it, it's a very disposable world. Uh, and I think we have to change that now. We know, I know we have to change that now. So, so the, the whole thing about uh, a, a disposable design is that you dispose of it, uh, and and we can't carry on like this. I mean, speaking as a furniture designer, is that the economies do not allow for designers to be paid, so they cannibalise design from everywhere that they can find it. They just copy. I think that it's a really big job that we have on our hands in that it goes back to schooling 
-hmm. And, um, you know, teaching kids the value of things and the consideration, it's actually understanding um, how things are made. So, you know, the art in um, and technology has to co- really come back into the schooling. Yeah. And, um, you know, hopefully that everybody will have a better approach. Do we think that there is such a thing as good taste and bad taste? And was there ever? Society is getting more complicated, isn't it? I mean, it's very hard to differentiate a sort of linear structure of class now. It's all much more complicated. And I think the key word I would put into this mix is identity or identities. And I think that's where design is. And I think it, it's a good thing. And whether they be individual identities or whether they be cultural identities, race, gender, whatever, or whether they be tribal identities, mm-hmm. taste taste groups or whatever, I think it's very complicated now. But I think it's not a, not a straight line. It's messy. Um, I totally agree that I think fundamentally taste is an expression of one's social position and one's beliefs and one's values. Um, and the idea of good taste is the monopolization of what is considered acceptable and good by one group of people, either in an industry, you know, who say that you have to be trained, as you just said, to be able to have that sense of good taste, um, or people in a class. Um, and what I like about what's happened over the past 10 years, 20 years, 30s, actually, it was beginning in the 80s, but um, is this idea that multiple taste cultures from lots of different social backgrounds, their tastes are all equally valid. Mm. And that I love. And that's something that's really been exciting mm. to see coming up. You know, Instagram, I mean, everything, everybody's following tribes, etc., mm. all the way. But um, you know, that whole, the whole thing, I'm sure everybody in the room has been up against a, a project with a client that actually is sitting there saying that um, the desk that they're sitting at, in is the best thing and the, the the pictures that they've got and and you know everything you you are up against it as a designer to actually tell this person no <laughs> no you can't use this but we have got to use it from an analysis point of view of, of why it's not good why it shouldn't be there or you know whether or not there's good taste or bad taste it's actually how we can use it in the situation that you've actually got so I think the tribal thing aspect is is there and 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 people follow but they don't consider they don't think of the value they don't think about what they're doing they're actually going someplace but where is it So what role do we think AI is going to play perhaps in shaping the next 50 years of design and will it be a positive one I I think it's rapidly moving in a direction where it's going to be able to replace a very large number of human jobs um, and I think this is um, it's a sort of creative destruction that seems to happen every 50 years or so in capitalism and this is right you know right the way back to the invention of the kind of um, industrial spinning wheels um that you know you have whole sectors of society that that just simply lose their world it just disappears overnight it's as only as good as you only get out what you put in really so it's it's, it's ten thousand brains so it's going to probably be better than my brain okay but um it it won't have some of the decision making and some of the creating skills that we have. So um, I'm very hopeful that it's going to support us in kind of pushing design forward. The whole thing of using AI in a responsible way, you know, in the medical professions and lots of different professions will actually help the world. I think when it comes to design, I mean, I'm a great advocate of thinking with your pencil. And you know, that, that whole thing of coming down to how do we, how do we put forward our ideas and and actually the personal connection with, with coming up with ideas and solving problems and communicating with people and all that kind of thing that can't be done with technology. So the worst thing in my view for the interior design profession is the television programmes. That's all I need to say. Worst thing for me over the past 50 years, I think, has been the decline of the British ceramics industry, um, the sort of fading away of Stoke, um, which I hope can be turned around. Ooh, what's the worst thing that's happened to design over the last five decades? I think maybe the fact that we still think of design as an elite concept, even though it isn't. It still has that sort of implication of being somehow out of our reach. So the worst thing that's happened in design in the last 50 years is is very double-edged, because it's this this, um, accessibility to to design or the simplification of design, something that kind of cuts deep and is, is, is problematic at times, is this feeling that it's very easy and simple and fast. Um, so that is, is, is a negative and kind of grinds a lot, but of course it's also um, empowered a lot of people and empowered speed and success and great output.